for the subject of oral pathology and oral medicine, the MCQs in the recent NEET paper were very simple and uh, straightforward. Today we are going to discuss some of the MCQs which we have tried to recall for this subject and proudly I can say that all of these questions have been discussed in our sessions. Whenever we have taken the class, we have discussed all these things in the during the session. So first question for oral pathology. A pathological lesion exhibits intraepithelial split. See as soon as you hear this word intraepithelial split, that itself will come to our mind that they are telling something about a split. That means the vesicle or a bulla within the epithelium due to loss of adhesion between the cells. Cells also show swelling and hyperchromatic nuclei, which is the most common diagnosis. See, the name itself will tell you, the clue itself, what is the clue? Intraepithelial split. So, intraepithelial split options here are given as pemphigus vulgaris, mucosal pemphigoid, cicatricial pemphigoid, paraneoplastic pemphigus. If you see, in all the other, the split is subepithelial as only in pemphigus vulgaris there is intraepithelial split or slit all are same slit or split is nothing but a space this has been very much discussed during our session with a help of a diagram so which diagram or which histopathological image we have discussed you can see this this is the classical you can see here this is the classical image this is the space that is the intraepithelial split. The split is present within the epithelium above the basal layer. This is a basal layer. This is a basal layer. Now we are able to see the split above the basal layer. And what are these cells? These cells are nothing but your zinc cells. And these zinc cells have got dark hyperchromatic nucleus. Why they are formed? They are formed due to loss of adhesion. So this has been discussed very much many times that due to loss of adhesion between the cells, the epithelial cells become rounded. These rounded cells are called as zinc cells and this split is seen above the basal layer. That is intraepithelial split. Intraepithelial split. Okay. Now moving on to the next question, a 40 year old male patient shows ulceration in the oral mucosa. That means male person is there, male patient, oral cavity is showing ulcers, conjunctivitis and HLA B51 positivity. This has been classically discussed in allergic and immunological diseases chapter. If you can see, you can check your notes. This has been discussed that. HLA B51 positivity is for Bessette syndrome. Bessette syndrome will show HLA B51 positivity. So it will 100% of the cases of Bessette syndrome will show oral ulcerations which look like after ulcers. Typically we know after ulcers right? Minor after ulcers are the most common after ulcers. So in Bessette syndrome patients typically oral ulcerations will be there. They look similar like the they look similar like the the uh, the uh, they look similar like the after ulcers and these patients have HLA B51 positivity. You should remember this. I hope if you remember this, you would have answered this correct. Bessette syndrome. We have discussed that Bessette syndrome is a chronic multi-systemic disorder characterized by recurrent oral ulcers, genital ulcers. Uveitis and skin lesions. HLA B51 is responsible for the strongest genetic predisposition. So this, this Bessette syndrome has got a HLA susceptibility. HLA B51 is the responsible for this. 
so this has to be remembered that and this has this if you remember this Bessett syndrome HLA B51 it's a very characteristic simple single liner MCQ next a question was asked on pemphigoid already we had a question as asked on pemphigus now pemphigoid so in uh, female patients where painful ulceration in the oral cavity is there patient is having conjunctivitis adhesion of bulbar and palpebral conjunctiva there is a split between the epithelium and the connective tissue that means sub epithelial split obviously the answer is mucosal membrane pemphigoid why because mucosa is involved eyes are involved mouth is involved vagina is involved and there is a split below, below the epithelium hence you call it as a sub epithelial split so the answer is characteristic mucous membrane pemphigoid here we can see this image has been discussed you can see the space here white color space this white color space is nothing but the split that you are seeing below the epithelium the split that you are seeing below the epithelium now this um, we have there was a, what was the thing here is there is adhesion between bulbar and palpebral conjunctiva what do you mean by this adhesion between bulbaral bulbar and conjunctiva is this is called a symblepheron symblepheron what is symblepheron is this is palpebral conjunctiva this is bulbar conjunctiva you will see an adhesion between the two that is called as symblepheron so symblepheron is again a very characteristic feature of the mucous membrane pemphigoid so again this is again a, this has been discussed this image has been shown and discussed in during our sessions a 16 year old female underwent a radiograph to examine the cause of her unerupted canine so the patient had unerupted canine see look at this age look at the gender female patient unerupted canine tooth was surrounded by unilocular radiolucency Histopathological examination or is shown below. What is the probable diagnosis? So this again, this image has been discussed classically. This is an image of AOT. If you can see here, all these duct-like structures can be seen here, right? The, I'll show you this. These are all duct-like structures. This is a glandular structure. This is a duct-like structure. So typical glandular appearance is seen in case of the AOT. And characteristically, we know that AOT is always associated with unerupted canine, that to maxillary canine. Two-third of the cases of the AOT are associated with the unerupted maxillary canine. Two-third of the cases occur in maxilla. Two-third of the cases involve the female patients. Hence, it is called as two-third tumor. This has been discussed multiple times. And this image has been discussed this that there will be a duct like structures so classically whenever you come across a question like uh, radio um, radiolucency as a surrounding the crown impacted canine two things should come to your mind either it should be dentigerous cyst or it should be hood how to rule out dentigerous cyst it is not dentigerous cyst because there is no lining here in dentigerous cyst there will be a cystic lining here there is no cystic lining Hence, we can rule out that it is not dentigerous cyst. Moving on to the next question. A patient complains of crowding of anterior teeth and small teeth. On examination, patient had mixed dentition with one tooth less than normal number. So, one teeth is less in count. Then normally, you will have for example 20 teeth. These patients will have 19. That is one tooth is less. One mandibular incisor is very large. Okay. Radiograph shows two crowns and single pulp chamber and single root with two root canals. What is the condition? If you can see carefully here, this is uh, the image of fusion. So fusion is a condition in which two tooth germs, adjacent tooth germs will fuse together at the level of dentine. And when you count the tooth, one tooth will be less. So the correct answer here is fusion of 7-2 and 
seven two and seven three. So because of this fusion, you are going to see one tooth less in number. Okay, so that is what we have to understand. We have to remember that what happens in fusion. Now the other options here are gemination, concrescence. What is gemination? Gemination is something like dividing. Fusion is union. Gemination is dividing. And what is concrescence? Concrescence is when the two roots unite together. That is called as concrescence. That is called as concrescence. So here clearly we can answer that it is fusion. Now moving on to the next question. A fifty-year-old male patient who's a fifty-year-old male patient whose CD count is whose CD count is one second yeah. sorry a 50 year old male patient whose cd4 count is less than 200 has white non scrapable lesion on the lateral surface of the tongue so see when the cd4 count here talking we are lateral surface of the tongue there are non scrapable white lesions what is the probable diagnosis or what is the agent that is causing this particular disease or you can say the lesion characteristically when you see what will come to your mind this is an aids patient hiv positive patient where we are going to see these white lines these are all the white lines that we are seeing along the lateral border of the tongue so these white striations elongated striations along the lateral border of the tongue is oral hairy leukoplakia and oral hairy leukoplakia is characteristically caused by Epstein Barr virus (EBV). Remember, this typically occurs in HIV-positive patients, AIDS patients. So again, this is again a simple single-liner discussion that has been discussed in viral infection chapter that oral hairy leukoplakia is caused by EBV. And these white lesions are white lines along the lateral border of the tongue, and they are non-scrapable. You can't scrape them. So with that, we can rule out the other options. Now moving on to the next question. Patient complains or presents with a chronic kidney disease. And these patients are having multiple white patches on the tongue. Bun level. What is bun is? Blood urea nitrogen level is above 300. Hemoglobin is 7 percentage. What is the probable diagnosis? 7 gram percentage. So, so when you see this. Typically, the diagnosis is uremic stomatitis. The name itself is telling patient is having kidney disease. So, because of this kidney disease, chronic di kidney disease, the patient's um, um, the patient's ure uremic levels increases, bun level increases, urea level increases. The, because of that, these patients will have white patches. You can see classically these are the white patches that you see in the oral cavity. The patient will have burning sensation. This MCQ, this direct MCQ has been discussed. The same question has been discussed like what is the about the bun level. Now uremic stomatitis is basically due to the chronic kidney disease where the blood, blood urea nitrogen is more than 300, 150 to 300, more than that. Okay, you have to remember this. Again, this has been classically discussed during our sessions. A 50-year-old male with a diagnosis of Hodgkin's lymphoma exhibited owl eye nucleus neoplastic cells. These cells are positive for. Now, what are these cells? In Hodgkin's lymphoma, we will see neoplastic cell called as reed Sternberg cell. And reed Sternberg cells are classically CD15 and CD30 positive. CD15 and CD30 positive. So, here the options are CD15, CD1. CD4, CD21. So the correct answer is CD15. So CD15 and CD30 are the two markers, immun, um, the immun, uh, histological immun IHC markers, which are positive for reed Sternberg cells. So these are the um, which can be seen in case of the Hodgkin's lymphoma. Now, what is the shape of bite mark produced by mandibular anteriors? Again, this question has been discussed in forensic odontology that different tooth 
produces different white marks. Like incisors, it will produce a rectangular. Canines, they will produce a triangular. Premolars, diamond shaped. Molars, will be more brown, broad, rhomboidal shaped. So here it was simply asked anteriors where it was given as rectangular, small rectangular. So bite marks, again this was discussed. I'll just show you uh, the that incisors which are the cutting teeth, which are four mandibular incisors, they will produce elongated or rectangular bite mark. Shape of bite mark has been discussed classically during our session. Syndrome with a triad of glossoptosis, cleft palate and micrognathia is, again this was discussed in diseases of bone, that Pierre robin syndrome is a syndrome which has which has all which has a triad of these three things glossoptosis cleft palate and micrognathia i'll show you an um, just uh, yeah this was the this is a, what is we have discussed that classical triad that you see in pierre robin syndrome is mandibular micrognathia glossoptosis and cleft palate and cleft palate uh, moving on to the next question here a patient presents with a brownish discolored teeth with a flaking of enamel. Radiograph showed pulp obliteration due to dentine deposition. What is the probable diagnosis? This has been again discussed multiple times that there is a developmental disturbance of dentine where abnormal secondary dentine is deposited. Because of this, the pulp is obliterated. You cannot see the pulp at all. Pulp you cannot see at all. Pulp is totally obliterated and that is nothing but your dentinogenesis imperfecta. I will show you an image of this. This is a classically the clinical image of a case of dentinogenesis imperfecta where we are going to see the brownish discoloration of the teeth and when you take a radiograph of these cases, you will see that there is no pulp at all. Pulp is totally obliterated. Why pulp is obliterated? Because of continuous secondary dentine, abnormal secondary dentine formation. So that secondary dentine formation is so much that you will not see the pulp at all in case of dentinogenesis imperfecta. Okay, so these are some of the straightforward single liner MCQs and whatever MCQs that we have tried to recall, recollect for the subject of oral pathology and oral medicine. So, if anything is left over, please kindly you can comment in this below in this video, YouTube video. I will definitely try to solve that particular uh, question and try to answer whatever is that. So, I hope all these questions what have, whichever has appeared in oral pathology and oral medicine has been discussed during our live sessions, during our teaching sessions. Uh, during our discussions, during our tests, one or the other place, these have appeared. So that is what is the importance of DAMS, where we try to teach the entire subject. The subject, all of us know oral pathology, oral medicine is a very vast subject. We try to teach the subject in a very systematic manner, simplified manner, where each and every small information, whichever is important, we will give it to the students. And that will be reinforced. See, always it is not important just to read, to reinforce, to revise those things. That is most important. And at DAMS, we give a lot of importance to this by giving the tests. So, thank you so much. And if any... Uh, unsolved question or if I have missed anything, please uh, you are free to write in the comment box. I will try to solve it. Thank you so much.